Hi everyone and welcome to my making podcast. My name is Marlene and here I talk about mostly knitting, some spinning, some sewing and other making stuff, some baking, some life, some traveling. And today I thought I'd go through my sweater quantity stash with you. I had actually previously gone through my entire stash last year and it was uh, quite a, a mammoth of a video to film, <laughs> to be quite honest, to take everything out. Um, most of my stash contains off sweater, cardigan, vest or t-shirt quantities. And then there's quite a bit of just like single skeins or maybe two uh, 50 gram skeins of project that I had pre previously knit up and that I had left over. And I'm calling that the baby stash <laughs> because I think um, if I've got like, maybe I'm completely delusional. I haven't knit for babies much before. So but I'm like thinking that maybe like 150 grams uh, like three skeins left over here or like one skein left over there should be enough for like a baby hat or vest or cardigan and so that is kind of like baby gift knitting or maybe if I have children of my own in the future um, that would be a nice like thing to grab and not pay for like use what I have but I'm not knitting with it at the moment it's not something that I'm um, kind of like keeping track of as much. I still have it in a, my Ravelry. So if I've started a project and I have some left over, it's my, in my Ravelry and I'll tag it with, I, I was tagging some of my stash yesterday in preparation for this video and I'll tag it with uh, scraps. And then the next quote, like I would say the maybe second biggest <laughs> category of my stash is definitely single skein um, yeah, single skeins for mostly, I would say sock knitting, which I'm looking forward to do more of this year. Um, I'm actually going to talk about that in my next upcoming video, which I'll use to maybe shine a bit more of light on my make nine, which I've been working with and like preparing for this, um, January. And it's been quite a lovely thing to just think about just with myself, but I'd like to reflect on it some more with you guys and just like talk about what are like what conclusions I have come to and what projects um, I have included in my make nine and some more goals. I know I've been talking about some intentions and goals in my last video, but honestly, I'm I love to like reflect and think about stuff like that. So there can never be enough planning and like, yeah, just making plans. I just love. I just love planning. I also like to execute those plans. So I will also be reflecting on how my um, January making goals have gone um, in my next upcoming regular podcast episode, which spoiler alert has been going quite well. I'm actually wearing one of my finished uh, first finished make nine projects and January goal, but I'm not going to talk about it too much, uh, but it'll be uh, topic of conversation for the next upcoming podcast episode for sure. So um, I'm not trying to get too distracted, which is difficult for me um, when talking about a topic that I'm so passionate about. Obviously, I know most people who are watching this will probably be able to relate. Um, but yeah, regarding the one like single skein stash, that would be another thing that I could see myself making a video about in the future, just to like talk through the skeins and where I got them maybe because most of them have a special story behind them. I know like most of you will also be able to relate to the like souvenir skein or like a gift skein or that one skein you got at the festival that you went to. So yeah, um, I, I'm just looking at my pegboard. I don't know if you know, I don't know if you know this, but I have this like um, pegboards that I built with my partner to show off some of my single skeins which I love and I'm just looking at it and honestly I can't wait to make with uh, all of them but I'm not in any rush because like I also like looking at them so today is going to be about the sweater quantities stash um, I'm counting kind of like vests and slipovers as sweaters too. This is mostly going to be cold weather knitting. I also will be uh, probably in a couple of months film a t-shirt and top 
quantity like stash quantity and plans video but today is going to be all about the sweaters and cozy knits and another thing that I wanted to disclaim is that I'm not going to show any of the uh, the yarn that I have in my digi stash currently I have um, sold I think about four sweater quantities at the beginning of this year to um, kind of make room for some yarn that was incoming and that I got as well so I'm at the at a similar point that I was at at the beginning of January I'm actually keeping track of my uh, skein count and meterage and grams of knitting like a uh, yarn like I said I don't have every single one of these like single skeins in my stash um, because I'm always taking them to like yarn swapping parties and like if we do a yarn swap at my uh, yarn like my knitting group local knitting group I will always just take them and offer them to my friends there and be like if you want to take some take some or I might just do like I said a baby uh, gift knit or something with them so I know that my stash doesn't contain all of the yarn that I have but most of it and it just doesn't contain the like single skeins here and there so I think at the moment I should have roundabout let let me just have a look at it so I don't I don't lie to you um, at the beginning of this year I had so I, I um, exported my uh, Ravelry stash into an Excel sheet and I had 7,896 grams of yarn in my stash. Like I said, I de-stashed and then I acquired some more yarn. Um, that is 32,143 meters and around five, 205 skeins. I'm not sure if that counts just like 100 gram skeins and then if there's like a 50 gram skein that's a half skein in that calculation. Honestly, I'm not a very like data-based person. Like I couldn't really care about the numbers more, <laughs> but I just wanted to have something to go off of. And now at the beginning of February, so end of J January, I have 6,821 grams left in my stash, which is uh, 26,630 meters and about 190 skeins. So I think some of the skeins that I have are a 50 gram skein. And if it's a 50 gram skein, that also counts as a skein. So um, yeah, I just had a look at it. Um, skeins is just a total of skeins. So I would probably go off of the grams or meterage um, that I have and my goal is to have a negative stash at the end of the year which I'm pretty confident that I will be able to meet. So getting out of the like numbery part if you didn't care about that I'm sorry I just I'm not gonna make it about anyone else other than myself I just want to meet that goal and I find it interesting to think about but I'm not gonna go too much into it in my episodes. Um, I'm trying to go through it somewhat chronologically. Uh, it's not going to be perfect, but I'm trying to start with like oldest stash and going to newest stash. Some of them, because they're like a combined sweater quantity, some of them will be old stash and new stash combined. We shall see. Okay, starting with, um, according to my notes, one of my oldest sweater quantities is a uh, sweater is for a sweater and that's how I'm going to uh, kind of structure it. I'm going to talk about the yarn and the project I have in mind for it. Um, yeah. <laughs> One of my oldest sweater quantities is from, let me see, I think somewhere sometime in 2022. Um, so about one and a half years ago. Uh, and I got this from Creme Casol Wool. It's a baby alpaca and merino cobweb 32 lace super fine super wash um, i got a recommendation at the time to hold this with the baby alpaca because this is going to be super drapey super soft but not going to hold its, its structure really well and so at the time i was recommended to hold this 100 percent wool but like lace weight with it to uh, get a bit more structure into the knit and the project that I'm pl planning or have been like I have planned 
ever since like 2022 to knit with this is the chestnut sweater by Petite Knit. So I'm not really sure why I haven't casted this on. There was some probably something more interesting and like I'm not sure like more engaging to knit on other than a dark gray stockinette sweater most of the time but I really want the finished object like I can tell uh, a dark gray um, like turtleneck jumper would be such a like like staple in my wardrobe maybe also um, would be styled quite a bit more I don't know like how to put it elegantly uh, and this is again the yarn that I'm planning to use with it and yeah the um, chestnut sweater I would also love to have a chestnut mini dress like just lengthen the sweater to like just go beneath my bum <laughs> like a mini dress like maybe cutting like me halfway through my upper leg but I don't think I have enough yarn I have like 13 of these mini balls but there's only 100 meters on them so I have about a thousand three hundred meter which I think should be relatively uh, like enough for my size but not enough to make it longer but let me knit this and then I can always try and see if I would want to maybe um, just like crew neck version in a dress form for another year I can see myself like knitting a dress like that for Christmas for example I'm not really interested in knitting any other knitted dresses at this point in time but that is just something that if I think about it I'm like mm, that would look really nice so yeah, first sweater quantity. I really hope it's not too dark. It's like literally <laughs> one o'clock in the afternoon and it is super great today. Yeah, talking about the weather again. <laughs> Thank you so much for your comments being like, obviously it's like related, like what the weather is like and being a knitter. So thanks. Um, my next uh, sweater quantity are these two cones. They're by Woolly Knit. And actually the old part about those is this one. I have written down that I got this somewhere around in uh, November 2022 as well. I had ordered one uh, like this nep, I think it's called Tierra something nep, um, merino wool cones and then the musco brown cone which I then used for my lento sweater and I still have some of that left. Actually more than like 300 grams. I'm not sure what to make with it. So I've actually put it up on my D stash since I've already made a sweater with it and I have so many other beautiful green yarns to use for hats and everything. I'm not really seeing the point in keeping it. So if you wanted to try out Willy Knit for yourself, uh, you could check out my D stash. Um, and for the longest time, I wasn't sure what to make with it. Obviously, since I have had this for uh, over a year now, but then I thought I, I wanted to make something like the no frill sweater, just like to show off the beautiful neps. But then Woolly Knit and I collaborated a couple of months ago and they sent me this beautiful skein, which I think is in the color. Let me have a look. It doesn't actually say it on here. This is Cotswold and this is the four ply British wool. And I, I just thought holding these two double wouldn't this make the like most beautiful care sweater by Rebecca Klo? If you have an opinion about this, please feel free to share your opinion in the comment section down below, which one should be the dominant color. Right now, I'm leaning towards having a brown sweater with light, like nappy um, accents, like the color work should be in this color because it would be like the, this, sweater but like it would be the other way around than the color work on this sweater so the contrast color would be the light one and the main color would be the dark one uh, whereas with this obviously it's the other way around I hope I'm making sense I've actually wanted to make the curry sweater for about one and a half years now I did get some yarn at Flock Fiber Festival from Extraordinates and Fibers for it and I'm not sure why I didn't think of it in the moment, but like knitting a colorwork sweater in superwash isn't the most logical thing to do. 
you can do it. Like if you've done it before, if it looks great on you, you do you. You can obviously do it. But the effect of like woolly wool knitting up in a color work and then like it kind of like working to well together so well, I just wanted that. Like you can knit color work with superwash, but I didn't want to. And I didn't realize that in the moment that I didn't want to. And I've already used the sweater quantity of Daybreak in the Rocky's DK for uh, another one of Rebecca's sweater. Actually, I knitted her a uh, stick season uh, sweater in the test knit actually with that yarn. I have that one skein of linen in the Rocky's DK left over and I have actually no idea what to make with it. So it's also in my D stash. So yeah, this is me plugging my D stash quite, um, <laughs> quite a lot, but yeah, if you're interested, I thought it would be a great like way to test out some yarns for um, a lesser, like a less higher price. And some of the yarns that you're actually not as easily able to get around here in Germany. So if you're also from Germany, I've had quite a nice, um, like just um, experience with de-stashing recently. The people who've then acquired the yarn had been so... Um, kind of like happy to get the yarn and work with it whereas I wasn't excited to work with the yarn at that point in time anymore and so I just think I just think it's a great idea and you'll actually see that I also shopped from a D-stash with which then made me so happy so yeah <laughs> um okay so Curry Sweater by Rebecca Klo and these two Woolly Knit cones one was gifted again thank you Woolly Knit and one I bought for myself and feel free to let me know which one you would take as like the contrast and the main color. So to keep on the theme of Woolly Knit, another one of their cones that they gifted me was this Merino four ply wool in Mostazza green. This is a lot greener than the one that I used for my own Lento, which was, like I said, the Moscow brown, more, more so like a brownish green. I've actually already skeined these up because there's some of them, there is still some left over. I'm going to hold this double to create a stick season sweater for Hannes. Um, my partner, I want him to have a matching sweater with me this year's Christmas time that would be so lovely I thought to like have him have a, a green version which I'm obviously gonna uh, then steal and wear myself sometimes um, but yeah have him have this like green version and if you are uh, following this channel for some time you'll know that mine is red and that is just I think a lovely combination so um, keeping this one short and sweet, I got the cone um, in 2023 from Woolly Knit as part of our collaboration. And yeah, I'm looking forward to knit with it. Although I've been prioritizing knitting for myself, so I haven't casted it on yet. But both of, the, both of these sweaters I could see myself making quite, not like soon, maybe I'll just cast them on in... Um, I don't know, like autumn time. The same with the chestnut sweater. I have some plans within the next couple of months. None of these are like important plans within these months, but I could see myself making all of them this year. And if I don't get to it, obviously the sixth season is a given, but if I don't get to the cur or the um, chestnut, I'll just make them in 2025. Like I'm not gonna beat myself up for it too much. Okay, next sweater that I have a sweater quantity for in stash is the Dad Sweater by Emily from Gently Chaotic Knits. And I have an Ampersand Fibers Jensen DK sweater quantity in Grisel 01. Um, and this is 100% US Corydale. And this is the yarn that is the like brand or uh, the shop yarn for La Mercerie and I got this when I was on, on Bainbridge Island in August 2023. 
So the plan for this dad sweater, I think, would be to do a little mini cow with Venetia from The Woolly Worker. We haven't recently talked about it anymore, but um, I think the plan is still standing to do it in a couple of months. I could see myself knitting this right before the summer. It's just a beautiful, light, gray basic, and I'm really looking forward to making it because it looks fabulous on uh, Ariel or... Um, Chelsea, whenever they've been wearing it, I always like the look of it. So yeah, I can't wait to make this uh, dad sweater by uh, my friend Emily, who I haven't knit any of her designs yet, which I think is a shame and I should change that. So I will <laughs> this year. Okay, next up, my cumulus blouse plans are going to come to fruition. And before I'm going to show you the yarn a bit more, I wanted to uh, announce that my friend Julia and I, her name is Julie Marquez on uh, Instagram. She's an illustrator or uh, kind of like designer. How would you call that? graphic designer, I think. And so she has come up with the cutest little doodle for our cow. It's called the Cumulus Mini Cow. Pretty basic. Uh, but beca because we want to keep it basic, she has set up the Discord channel for us. So I'm going to link a link to that channel down below. And I hope you all and everyone who wants to knit the Cumulus Blast with, that, with us is going to go over there and get comfortable in that channel. We're not gonna start until the 1st of March. So everything until then can be planning and we can obviously talk about it already in the Discord, but uh, we're gonna cast on on the 1st of March. That's the plan so far. Um, I have to knit some of my other stuff before then. So that's why, and um, Julia as well. So we didn't want it to be any like stress so we wanted to give us some ourselves some time to get started with it but yeah the cumulus mini cow it's not going to be like there is not going to be any prizes it's just going to be chilled talking about our projects uh, i have gotten some of your like some messages from you uh, guys that you're interested on joining and i just thought it would be a nice thing to have a community-based uh, event kind of like going for two months without like any competition or something. Obviously prizes in cows are always a nice thing to do, but I just wanted to have this be a casual one. So if you want to like join our casual Cumulus mini cow, you can do so through the Discord channel that Julia has provided and go follow Julia for that matter. She's doing some great colorful knits over on her Instagram channel. She's sharing her progress there and she's a great, she's been a great Instagram friend to me. So, and we're doing this together. So regarding my stash for it, I've got some Isager, uh, Isager Trio 1, which is a 50% linen and 30% cotton and 20% lion cell and a 100% alpaca, which is the Alva Focolana um, brand in a kind of like grayish brownish beige in the colorway 979 and then the trio is more of in like a camel shade it's actually called camel and so i hope that the two of them will cancel each other out a bit and create kind of like a more natural uh, looking color which i think is always best for my skin like not having something too warm or too cold um i think suits my like quite pale complexion quite well. So these are the colors. I hope you're able to see them. This stash I acquired when I was in Copenhagen, I think it was September of 2023. Uh, and I went to a couple or uh, many yarn stores there and I got both of these things there and the next project that is actually the only project that or maybe not the only but one of those where I don't have a concrete project idea yet and I'd be so happy if you would want to share your favorite cable sweater projects with me is the Solje by um, Hillisvog and a Leave No Trace Story Silk by Explorance and Fibers. 
this is supposed to be, in my mind, in my like imagination, become a cabled sweater. It could also be a cabled cardigan. I've recently seen a couple of really nice cabled cardigans, but I'm lacking ideas for a cabled sweater. I wanted to make the sweater number 15 for the longest time, but this is going to be kind of more like a worsted gauge. And I think the sweater number 15 is more of a DK. And I can always make that, like it's not a priority for me anymore. I've actually shuffled my queue around a bit and have banished all of my, oh, it would be so nice to make this plans to a, it would be so nice to make this list. <laughs> and so my queue is now actually filled with stuff that I'm like, I want to make this this year. And where whenever something like gains priority, I'm going to shuffle it up in the list or if something is like, like I'm not excited for it anymore I'm gonna shuffle it down and eventually just delete it from there for the longest time I wanted to keep stuff on there to show myself whenever I've had the idea of making that item with a specific yarn first for example the curse sweater was on there uh like one and a half years ago already and then whenever I used the yarn for something else I deleted it from there and now I've just only put like put it on like put it back on there December 2023 or something and so it somehow like kind of uh, it's not the original plan anymore but I mean it doesn't really matter when I've put it on there I thought it would be interested interesting to like tell you I've now casted it on and it's actually been in my queue for two years I thought that would be interesting like information but maybe it's not that important and it's more important for me to have a a queue that is like actually accomplishable I'm not sure if that's a word but yeah that's what I feel like at the moment at least and I'm gonna try and like this is such a no pressure zone for me like my making is supposed to be pure fun like no stress that I thought I feel like shuffling around my stash my queue whatever I'm gonna do it so um and I'm another rule I know at this point you all know that I kind of like to impose some rules on myself and I don't know why I find that to be fun but apparently I do <laughs> but I don't want to have more than one page of the queue because anything above that is just not like not attainable like not doable within a span of a couple of months and there's always going to come like some more fresh and new ideas maybe a test knit maybe something like that and I'm holding true to my thought of not test knitting more than like not biting off more than I can chew because there have been some more test knits that have tickled my fancy or pickled my fancy as I recently said to <laughs> Chelsea and she's like that's a much better saying <laughs> because I couldn't like think of the saying and then I just thought oh pick up my fancy sounds great yeah it, it's not correct but whatever um yeah Florence uh, by handmade by Florence she had come out with this like step-by-step -step cardigan and I was so close to <sighs> like answering the test call what's the words to apply I was really close to applying but then I was like no you're on a test net for Rebecca Klo spoiler alert I'm gonna talk about it more in my next uh, podcast but I'm doing the lauder vest um and so yeah I'm, I'm knitting on a test net at the time one test net at a time I cannot apply to more than one at a time okay great so cable sweater in my future. Uh, I got this at the Leaf No Trace. I think it arrived in December or early January. Uh, I ordered this a couple of weeks prior. And then when I got this, I first thought about making a cumulus blouse, a second one, or maybe another Kalini blouse with the Surrey quantity that I got. But then I was like, this is the, the yarn color that I wanted to have for a cable sweater and so I got the Solje because I also wanted to try Hillesvog for the longest time. I've heard people like Anna from APT Atelier and then Inga from Knitting Traditions talk about Hillesvog for 
months and years now. And so they both made me want to try this so, so much. So. Cable sweater in my future, hopefully. So this next idea is actually a combination of old stash, newly acquired yarn from our yarn shop and yarn that I bought off a D stash. And then the idea has also been influenced by the friend that I bought this yarn off of. <laughs> so my old stash would be a sweater quantity of the Knitting for Olive Merino in Marzipan. I've had this for the longest time. It was supposed to be a sweater number 15. But then I acquired this beauty. Yes. Yes, it is extra sprinkles. Yes, it is highly influenced by Chelsea of True Line Knits, as is my obsession with sprinkled yarns, because she has opened this gate for me at the time. I didn't know about hand dyed yarn before really. So uh, around about a year and some months ago, that gate opened in my mind and I knew of this and I could, my life has not been the same ever since. Sounds really dramatic, but it is true. <laughs> so this is the Cashmere Caverns sock. I got four skeins off of a D-stash by my friend Kiliana. She's from the Netherlands. I hope I'm not mistaken. Yeah, she's from the Netherlands. Kelly's from Belgium. I hope I'm right. So I thought, what shall I do with this? And we talked about it and we talked about it and she helped me figure it out. And she actually sent me a pattern idea, which I had seen previously and thought it looked so cool, but I didn't have the like urge to knit it. Probably because I was missing an integral part of knitting, planning projects, the yarn. She sent me a link to the Doppio, Doppio sweater being like, Marlene, you should knit this. And I was like, Kaliana, you're right, I should. Uh, because I have this in stash and these two together would cancel out some of the like grayishness in the yarn. And then we were thinking about, because she had also bought some soft silk mohair for it, which soft silk mohair color would look best with it. We thought about wheat because there's actually some or quite a bit of yellow in there, but I didn't want it to become too yellow because I actually already own a yellowy speckled sweater. So I went with oat. Oat is actually one of my favorite soft silk mohair colors ever. And so these three things together make up, and obviously I had to swatch because I'm so excited to knit this and I probably won't until autumn. So I had to swatch to like keep up, like scratch that itch. It's a weird saying, but I often use it, whatever. So this is the swatch. I was hoping to get a couple more speckles, but I think like in the grand scheme of things, like in an entire sweater, the speckles will be visible enough. The marzipan and oat, for me, cancel out the like gray parts and yellowy parts enough. So this is kind of the perfect swatch. Um, I'm really looking forward to it and making the Doppio sweater actually by Song Hee Knits, I think is her name. Um, I'm going to do like a little mini cow with Emily from Gently Chaotic Knits actually. We were talking about it on Instagram and she had previously talked about it in one of her episodes that she wanted to make a doppio sweater with one of the Sorella uh, Gilmore Girls colorway, which I was like, oh my god, that's gonna look so nice. It's like her colors, the speckles are all the colors that Emily tends to go for and that really suit her. And I was like, we should knit it together. And she's like, I would want to knit it in autumn because it's like rewatching Gilmore Girls time. And I'm like, you are correct. <laughs> I don't know why I'm retelling stories so weirdly today, but yeah, we came up with that great idea and we're going to knit it hopefully together. Maybe do like a little cast on FaceTime or something since we haven't seen each other since um, Flock last year uh, or like talk to um, in person, obviously, because I, yeah, whatever. <laughs> and um, I'm not sure if I'd be able to go to Flock. So yeah, I think that that'd be really nice. So that's my Dopio sweater plans and I'm extremely excited for them. 
next up um, sweater project is also a new one and then I'm gonna get to another old one which I completely forgot to put into my plans but it's lying right there so forget about the chronological order we've already messed it up I mean I messed it up you didn't do anything wrong um, since I had gotten rid of some sweater quantities I felt in the mood to shop just a tiny bit and we do have Slavika yarns in shop but we're having his yarn on sale because he's no longer dying for yarn shops he's just dying for his own um, online shop and so I had previously acquired a shawl or slipover quantity of his yarn and I'm hoping to someday knit a shawl with it but this yarn I see it's called Emerald Eyes as in, in the Mokash base, which is 60% uh, superwash merino, 20% yak, and then 20% silk. This is a DK base. And this haunted me for a couple of weeks. Whenever I was at the shop working, I was like looking at it from like giving it a side eye. And uh, yeah, so I looked into to the basket one night after work and I was like, how many skeins do we have left? And there were five skeins of this beautiful emerald ice colorway left. And I was like, this is a sign. I have to get it. I actually brought back two skeins that I had previously also acquired from the shop and was like, can I exchange those? Because I didn't see myself knitting like a bright orange hat. So I returned them to the shop and got this. It still cost me obviously some money, but I had de-stashed some. So this was okay. I'm making my own rules so <laughs> this is a beautiful like emerald green base and I obviously also had to knit up a little swatch and I was mulling over the idea of what to make with it looking through looking through my library actually and thinking like what kind of easy stock net sweater did I want to make before but I haven't made so far and I came upon the um, melange sweater by Petite Knit. Obviously as you can tell I'm not gonna do a melange look I'm gonna do a uni like tonal look but I really wanted to make that sweater since I thought the kind of like drop shoulder design was looking really nice and I had seen it uh, styled by some people and really liked it. Um, I'm not sure if I said that, but it's a petite knit um, design. And I'm going to try and make it with this yarn. I have five skeins, like I said, and this is 200 grams uh, to 200 meters, 212 meters for 100 grams. So that would be around a thousand and a bit meters. Actually, a thousand two hundred and a bit. Two, four, six, eight, no, a thousand and a bit. But mostly hand dyed skeins have a bit like more grams on them, sometimes just like 10 grams. So I'm gonna weigh all of them soon. And I think I should be able to just like, maybe I'm gonna knit a size down to what I usually knit from Petite Knit and have a not so oversized drop shoulder, maybe a bit cropped um, sweater in a superwash yarn with a silk content to maybe like wear at the end of the summer or like on summer nights where it's not too warm with like a long skirt or something so I have some pretty nice ideas for this and these two I'm going to treat as like my dopamine cast-ons obviously I do get like a dopamine rush whenever I do color work or cables or other new stuff but like cast on a beautiful like sock set as well but these are just gonna be my easy stock knit, kind of like staple, but super fun sweater knits. And I can't wait to knit with them. I'm just like, they look so nice. I love them. I mean, I love all of my sweaters and I'm like totally into more rustic woolly wools, but like the look of a hand dyed skein and like knitting with Slavy Kayans as well as Exploring Knits and Fibers is just, it's, it's special right? It's like a special treat, I feel like. So these were 
most but not all of my sweater quantities. I actually have one last sweater quantity that I got in the United States when I went there in August last year. This is a Lions brand Fisherman's Wool and the colorway is Oatmeal. And I've got four skeins of this. So yeah, previously I wanted to make a Moby sweater with this for my partner. Now I don't know if I want to make one for myself <laughs> or if I make one that we can both wear. That would actually be a good idea because um, we are similarly sized. Obviously he has more of like a broad shoulder, no boobage situa situation. So we're kind of like we're differently in our proportions, but kind of similar heights. Like he's a bit taller than me, but we can, we wear a lot of the same stuff, like apart from jeans or like, yeah, trousers. We share some of our t-shirts and whenever I buy myself some oversized stuff like um, vintage sweatshirts or t-shirts, most of the time they end up in his part of the wardrobe. So um, maybe that would be like kind of a kind of a good idea to like knit a Moby sweater, which I'm not seeing myself knitting up to in this lifetime. So I would either make like something like an Aaron, classic Aaron sweater for myself, one for me and one for him. But since I'm now making the stick season for him, he's not gonna get another sweater this year. He's probably gonna get another sock, maybe two sets of sock, whatever, like I can manage. Um, maybe an, another hat, but I'm not gonna be able to make two like huge sweaters for him a year. So this might be something to knit up next year. Moby sweater, I can see like be really cute in this color, but is it going to be for him or for me? Or am I going to just make one that we can both wear? I think that's actually a great idea. So yeah, I have another Pearl Soho sweater quantity. It's called the Linen Quill and it's in the colorway Oatmeal Gray. It's 1020 and it's a beautiful mix of fine highland wool, alpaca and linen. And this is it. I had a plan for this, a pretty concrete plan, but my plans have changed like I uh, mentioned in my last video. So this could become a shawl, like a, a scarf shawl, um, maybe, but also maybe it could become another sweater because I have enough of it and I'm more so a sweater wearer, but I also have a lot of sweaters already uh, and I want to make more shawls, but then also I want to make more shawls with my hand spun um, and I'm planning on hand or spinning for the traveler's shawl as well so I'm not I'm not yet sure what I want to make with it that's just why I didn't really feature it uh, prominently in that section but yeah that is the last thing in this category as far as I can tell, and please don't hold me to it, I don't want to lie to you guys, there might be something hidden in this flat and I don't know about it, but these were my sweater quantities. Now I'm actually going to go on and talk about two more vest quantities that I have, and then there's one quantity that I have and don't have any plans for, but I'm actually also going to show you. So the next thing that I have here is the Cascade 220 Heathers, and it's a really dark beautiful yarn it really just feels super nice and my plan is to make the amy slip over with this i've uh, acquired some knowledge from people who've also done it with this or a similar yarn and have changed up like um, measurements because of a different gauge they got with this so i hopefully have linked those like messages people have sent me and helpful comments i think ichi from tangerine knits also knitted this I'm not sure if she used this exact yarn anymore, but she also had to change like um, things because she had a different gauge. So she has sent me some helpful notes and then another person on Ravelry, um, thankfully, because I, I've, um, I had found her project page and um, was wondering, wondering how she did some of the stuff. So I'm pushing that even though I really want to have it, like I really want to wear the Amy slipover, I have been pushing it uh, a bit to, to the back because some other things just have come up and were more important to me at the time. But I could see myself 
I could see myself knitting it whenever I'm done with my cable sweater test for Rebecca since I don't know if I want to do like two cable vests like back to back because that's actually what my next sweater quantity vest quantity is for. It's the Alva by Focolana again in colorway 402 and then the Rao work by um, no, the DK I think it's called. It's a uh, DK two ply woolen spun in the colorway graphite. And I've had this for since sometime in 2022. And then I some time after that got this um, online, both of them. And the two, uh, like the 2022, 20, no, the Cascade 220 I got uh, also at. I think it was the teaspoon, no, the little teacup, the like lovely um, Seattle yarn shop that I went to with Chelsea and I love that yarn shop. And I'm tea cozy, it's called. It was one of the nicest yarn shop I've ever been to and they had a beautiful selection. So got this online about sometime in 2022 and got this in 2023. So I really wanna make those two vests this year. And then I have two more slipover quantities, both acquired in 2023 that I don't have any concrete plans with yet. This mega hank from uh, Woolly Knit, they also sent to me. Thank you so much again. This is actually 500 grams of yarn, which I didn't realize at the time would be enough to make a slipover for me most definitely, because this is a fingering weight yarn, so it should be... If it's around like 400 meters per 100 grams should be like 400 times five which is um i'm not good at math for eight thousand two hundred thousand six hundred like it's around two thousand meters which if i'm holding this double and the yardage requirement for a vest should be around like a thousand meters maybe for my size maybe it's even less like around six to eight hundred meters that should be perfect for another maybe cabled or structured or just stock net vest so yeah i don't have any concrete project plans i actually have one vest in my wish list as well that looks really nice from vanessa pelisa i have never knit something from her but i think she's also the tech editor for Gregoria Fibers. So I have kind of worked with her before on the test net or know her through that. But I think that would look really nice in this or maybe the weekend v-neck um, slip over that has also been in my queue. But I've just recently took it down my queue because I didn't have any concrete plans with it and put it into my would like to knit sometime soon or maybe in the future. And then the last sweater or vest quantity is the Bali colorway in the Unspun by um, Wool and Twine. This is actually, let me have a look. I think her Unspun base is called, I'm not sure. Is it just called Unspun or Thrive, I think. Yeah, so this is about 200 grams it should be and I'm not sure about yardage I have been trying to kind of um, compare it to other unspun yarn which is a bit difficult but I have learned more about it through watching um, Mia by Knitting Graces videos so I've not yet come to like realization about what I make when I want what I want to make with it but since I have been gaining some more scraps uh, within a similar like thickness and length. Uh, for example, the um, the Rain Cloud in Sage dark gray unspun, which I use for a cardigan or a more whitish unspun that I used for the Aosta cushion. I'm thinking about like collecting some of my unspun scraps and maybe making something like color work-esque with this as well. Maybe this could be like one of the contrast like main contrast colors and then using scraps for like the second contrast color and then maybe getting a sweater quantity of plutilopiate sometime for example or the 
wool dreamers um, and spun that they have. And then maybe holding this with it. So this could be part of a sweater quantity or it could be held with a silk mohair. Um, I'm hoping that this could be like a crop vest as well. I was a bit like, I didn't want to buy too much at the time from the Wool & Twine um, update. It was my first time buying from her and I got the sweater quantity for this sweater and then just two of the Bali. And like she said, you shouldn't buy too little for it uh, because you never know how much you will need kind of like, yeah, and it's not going to come back. So I didn't really listen to that apparently and I got a bit like a bit little. So if you have any ideas of what to make with about 200 grams of unspun yarn, you can also tell me. I've actually just finished another sneak peek. I finished a um, unspun cushion cover, which I love, with about 45 grams of unspun yarn. So, but I don't want to make a thousand cushion covers in my time. So yeah, we shall see. But that is it. Whew. That is quite a lot of plans and knitting. But like I said, I'm thinking about doing another one of these with my tops and t-shirt quantities that I have a lot less of, maybe like five t-shirt quantities that I want to knit up with. But some of them I've also had from 2022 and some of them were from 2023 and I always like to like think of the story behind them like did I get it like gifted from a friend did I buy it on a trip to maybe London or I don't know the the, the US or um, a festival maybe Barcelona Knits or something so I did not sew the sweater quantities that I'm currently working with obviously because they're like already spoken for and I will feature these projects in my next podcast episode. So I hope this video was interesting and insightful. Um, I really hope you like this. If you want to see my um, single skein stash, which I'm planning to use some of the single skeins to uh, enter the, um, I think it's called Lonely Skeins Cow 2024. Not sure if the 2024 is in there, but it's by Haley by The Knit Weekend. I'm also planning on entering the um, Woolly Knit and Young Folk Knits cow with my Woolly Knit Knits this year or just any like woolly knitting project. And then there's another cow that I would like to join. Let me have a look. I've actually written it down my 2024 planning taking part in cows uh, is the Free Your Needles Cal 2024 by Anastasia, uh, my friend Anastasia from Free Your Sheep. And I'm thinking about just entering that cow with any of my older whips that I'm freeing my needles off. And then obviously there's a Cumulus Mini Cow by myself and Julia. So just wanted to mention some of the cows that I have been seeing uh floating around kind of there's a cute little blue tit bird oh my god and she's just in front of our window hi little one what are you doing there there's no food there okay so i tried to kind of finish off this video I a couple of times and now I'm actually gonna go and knit some more. Today's Saturday, I do not work today. I'm actually got a FaceTime scheduled with Anastasia from Free Your Sheep later on and um, yeah, I'm just looking to have some together knitting time even if it's virtually and I'm also planning on filming another video maybe tomorrow to have some more content to go up within the week which is going to be a make nine overview, um, some of my, yeah, make nine plans. It also should be a relatively quick video. I actually hope this one was, um, I'm not sure. I have to look at my camera <laughs> in order to see that. And you don't want to see the chaos around me, which I now will have to clean up. But yeah, I hope you're taking care of yourselves. I hope you're getting loads of knitting time and I hope to see you next time. Bye.